morning, good morning, good morning. Main man out to Roger Sean, how's everybody doing this morning? Let me go ahead and set you up right. To push you just a little bit. Hope everybody's doing all right this morning. How's your morning going today? I want to welcome you guys this morning. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit of encouragement. Today, you already know, baby. You already know what we're all about, man. We're about encouragement. We're about that positive life. We're about that perspective life. That perspective that says, you know what? I No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what it seems like, there's always another way to look at things. There's always another view. And so today, I'm going to share some words, some encouragement. Is anybody in right now going through a test? Is there anything in your life that you're going through right now, whether it's a test in your finances, a test in your marriage, your relationship, a test with your children, a test in your purpose, a test in your identity, a test in your job, a test in your mind? Well, if so, today's message is going to be for you. And so I want to make sure you stick around because I'm at the end of this, I'm going to give a prayer. And I'm going to share a prayer that I wrote down that I prayed, something that I said, something that I had meditated on that really gave me peace. Uh, and no matter what I was going through, no matter what the storm was. And so, again, I want to welcome you guys again uh, to this morning's Morning Inspiration. Again, I'm Donovan Darris. You guys can see me on YouTube, on Facebook, on, on Instagram, on Twitter. You mentioned it. Uh, again, whatever you need. If there's any questions you have while we're doing this, if there's anything that's coming across your, that comes across your mind, comes across your heart, and you're like, you know what, Donovan, can you share something on this? Because I need a word for this. That's what this is about today. If you need a word, if you need encouragement on something, this is your opportunity. This is your way that you can get encouraged in that area. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit about infliction. You know, a lot of times the, the, the Bible says that in this world, we will go through tribulations. Jesus said in this world, we're going to go through tribulations. But he says, be a good cheer because I've overcome the world. What does that mean? That means, number one, there's a promise to us that in this life, we will have difficulties. There will be some things that, cut, that gives us tension. There will be some things that we want to accomplish, but it seems like we're being resisted. It may, it, you will go through some things where it seems like you take one step forward and two steps back. There, God is telling us and promises that that is going to happen. See, the perspective of life is this. If you're looking through the one perspective of things are supposed to go linear. That means they're only supposed to go, the harder I work, the more things are supposed to produce. Or the more I do this, or the more I say that, the more things are just supposed to line up. But how many of you guys know with that type of mindset, with that type of perspective, you can find yourself getting blindsided? And so in that passage where it says, in this world, you will go through tribulations. It lets us know right now to come to agreement, to settle the fact that you will go through something. But there's a reason why you're going through it. There's a blessing for when you go through it. As I say, it, you're not just going through. You're going through to get to somewhere. And so I'm going to read some passages as it says. In this world, you're going to go through tribulations. He says, but be of good cheer. I've overcome it. That means our Savior. That means the one who created everything. Think about God as the manufacturer, which he is. The designer, which he is. The one who made everything, which he does. Just like you're watching me on a phone, you're watching me on a computer, an iPad, a tablet, whatever you may be watching me on. There's a designer for that manufacturer, for that product. There's something and someone that designed it, that knows everything about it. It's something or someone that formed it and put it together masterfully. And before they ever put it together, they started with the purpose in mind. They started with the end in mind. They knew what they wanted that product to do. They knew what that product is able to do. They knew the capability and the tension and the problems that that product may face. So built into that product was the very ability to stand against any test. Built into that product was the very ability to overcome any trial and tribulation. Matter of fact, before they ever gave that product, before they ever gave you this phone, before they ever gave you the tablet, before they ever gave you a car, before they gave you any product that was made, before the designer gave it to you, they also gave you with it a manual. They gave you with it, they gave with it a manual, something for you to understand more about that product. So that way you can understand that when, I go through, when that problem goes through troubles or when if there's issues with it, you know where to go. You know what to do. Well, you see, so our life is the same way. 
The one who made us, designed us, formed us in his own image, okay? In his own image, which means his own idea, knows exactly the end of your life. Knows exactly the capacity that you have to withstand any trial and tribulation. That's why there's another passage that says, no, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know what I mean, that you're able to stand against any, everything, in anything. Because nothing is going to be too hard that you're not going to be able to stand with. It says, God will not give you more than you're able to bear. And so God, think about this, the designer would not put more on that product than it's able to bear. But it says this, but if there is more than you're ever able to bear, then God says, I'll give you a way out. I'll give you an escape. I'll release you. I'll rescue you. I'll help you. So if you're going through trials and tribulation right now, my encouragement to you, number one, is that you're able to make it. You're able to make it through. You have more in you to withstand the pressures of life, to withstand the things that you go through. You have it in you. And so, so when you look at life, don't look at, try to look at the way and say, you know what, how can I live my life without problems? But just as we say, look at while you're in the problem, give me strength to endure while I'm in it. And so again, if you're just joining the page today, we're going to talk a little bit about affliction and the blessings, the blessing of affliction, the blessing. You say, wait a minute, what's a blessing about me being short on my money? What's a blessing about me being sick in my body? What's a blessing about me going through relationship problems? What do you mean there's a blessing in that? Well, stick, stick tight because I'm going to read some passages and I'm going to give you some perspective that hopefully can help you understand that there's a blessing in your affliction and it doesn't matter what it is. There's no trial, no tribulation that you may face that's not common for human beings to have faced. But everybody has faced stuff. There's nothing new under the sun. And today I truly believe that I'm here to share a word of encouragement to let you know that you're going to make it through to where you're supposed to go. So here's a couple passages, okay, that I want to read and I'm just kind of expound upon. Again, remember, if you have any questions, any comments, feel free to post, okay? Go ahead and do me a favor. If you can, go ahead and share this on your page and let people know, okay, come to the page. Somebody else may need a word in their affliction. You may not be the only one. So make sure we, you know, we share the word with other people so they can get something to eat as well, right? So here's a couple passages in the book, in the Bible. And one of them is found in Job, Chapter 5, chapter 3, verse 17. It says, and if you don't know a little bit about Job, Job was a man that had everything, and then all of a sudden, one day, one day, okay, everything just sent King crashing down. He lost his kids, he lost his cow, he lost his house, he lost everything. But everything was happening for a purpose. Everything was a test. Everything was a test for him to go through. You know, in life, temptations are not bad. You know what temptation means? The word temptation means test for weakness. So when you're being tested, when you're being tempted for something, it's not a bad thing. It's just testing for weakness. If somebody builds a bridge, what they do before they ever clear it for you to drive over it is they test it for weakness. They go over it. They put pounds of pressure against it because they want to test it. They want to tempt it and see where is it weak? Where is it strong? And can it withhold the strength and the burdens and the weight of life? that it is about to bear. And so in this passage and in this time period, Job was going through so much stuff, but Job didn't understand exactly why he was going through it. But things kept happening to him. Think about it. In one call, in, in one message, you're sitting at the table as we are right now, and then somebody rush in the door and say, hey, such and such, hey, your, your kids was in this building, and then a lightning struck, and a tree fell down on the house, and everybody in the house, you know what I'm saying, burned up. They said, you know what, then what happened was all of a sudden a tornado came because of the rainstorm and it swiped up all your cattle where you was making your money and you're living. And then all of a sudden you look at your skin and like while you're stressing out and your fever and everything, you start looking at your skin and you start getting all these sores and stuff. And you're like, wait a minute, what in the world did I do to deserve this? But behind the scenes, everything was happening for a reason. The Bible goes on to say that what was happening behind the scenes that Job did not know was that God, the designer, the manufacturer, knew everything that was in Job, knew everything that Job was going to go through, but made a way for Job to escape. And so he said, you know what? I'm going to allow life to test you. I'm going to allow the enemy to test Job. And all the enemy wants to do is to get you to curse God. All the enemy wants you to do is to forsake your faith. All the enemy wants you to do is to turn around. All the enemy wants you to do is to say, man, forget it. All the enemy wants you to do is to curse God. It's to curse the day you're born. It's to basically say, you know what? what why is it? It ain't even worth it anymore. That's all the enemy wants you to do. 
But God, the designer, knows. And I can just imagine, just see him right now, like he's saying, you know what, hold on. Just one more day. Just one more moment. Just one more breath. Just one more prayer. Just one more step. You can do it. You can do it. And so the story goes on in that passage where it talks about after Job left everything, even his wife even left him. His wife got sick and tired of going through. Have you ever had somebody around you um, and they didn't quite understand why you were going through what you were going through? Or they didn't understand why the marriage is the way it is, why the finance is the way it is, why you're in between jobs, why it seems like you're starting, you're stopping, whatever. And they just said, you know what, they just giving up on you. They stopped almost believing in you and the God that is in you. You ever had that before? It could be downright discouraging. And that happened to Job as well. And so what Job basically said, listen, man, I'm not going to curse God. But then after a while, how many of you guys know that sometimes we can only take enough? Enough is enough. Sometimes you can be on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, man. You can be walking with your head up high, going through, talking about I'm fighting. You know what I'm saying? I'm winning. I'm doing all this stuff. But comes Friday, Saturday, you're like, you know what? A man only can take so much. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever been to that place where you're like, I just can't take it anymore? I've been there before. I've been to a place where I felt like I was, you know what I'm saying, I was losing my mind. I thought I was losing my family, losing my children, losing my relationship, losing my finances. I felt like, I felt like the walls of my mind was crashing in on me. I felt like I was being punished. I felt like things had turned around. Me. I thought that I did too much or didn't do enough. I thought that, you know what, that, that was it for me. But how many of you know if you hold on, if you just keep going, the blessing is on the other side as you go through. Because the Bible says everything in life has a purpose. There's a reason, there's a season for everything. And if we put on the lens of purpose, we may see it. You see, there's some things in life that we're going to go through. Because God is a God of purpose. And everything he does has a purpose to it. There's some things you're going to go through that you may not understand the purpose of it at that moment. But if you persevere and you keep going... And time will, t time will pass. Pretty soon, you'll begin to understand what the purpose of it is. In my book, Next Level Motivation, Principle for Living Life to the Fullest, you can find it on Amazon, I talk about this exercise I want you to do. Okay? And what I want you to do is I want you on one side, I want you to write down the top five challenges that you went through in your life. Those, the, the most horrific things that you went through that almost would have caused you to stop, give up, throw in the towel. And on one side, I want you to write those five things. And on the other side, right next to it, I want you to write down, in your wisest perspective, what do you believe that those things taught you? What are the lessons that they taught you? What are the things that you developed out of it because of it? That had you not been through it, you would not be where you're at now. This exercise I call redefining your adversity. Write down your adverse situations and then redefine it. What is the purpose of it in your wisest perspective? What am I not doing? I'm not defining it for you. I'm not telling you the lesson you should have learned. I'm allowing you to define it. I'm allowing you to really look at it and say, you know what, I never looked at it that way. But you're right. If that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have this. I'll give you a prime example. You know, I was married in 1998, married to my, you know what I'm saying, my ex-wife. And we were married for 12 years. In my heart, in my mind, I never thought about divorce. You know what I mean? I had children. We had children and stuff. I never thought about that. I was like, hey, I love a relationship. And, and I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to be together and keep my family together forever. But how many of you know sometimes you can want something, but it don't always turn out exactly the way you want. But there's a purpose to everything. And I remember going through my divorce and never knowing, like, man, what's going on? What is this? Why, are this, why is this happening? I didn't sign up for this in this way. I'm not saying I'm perfect, she perfect, or whatever. But I just, hey, let's just work things out, I guess. But because of that, because of that divorce, what that did was it was the first time through the divorce, right? It was the first time that I got a chance to be alone. I got a chance to be all one. I got a chance to understand who is Donovan besides just being a father. So you see, when I was in, when I was in high school, you know, I used to take care of, you know what I'm saying, my mom and try to do everything I can for my family. When I went to college, I brought my brothers with me to live with me in college. Okay, when I got it, right before I got out of college to go into the NFL, you know what I'm saying, you know, I, I, got, I got married and, you know what I'm saying, I had a son, a stepson, and I had my own children. And so, you know, again, I was just, I just knew how to serve. I just knew how to be for, some, for everybody else. But through this divorce, I got a chance to be by myself. And at first it was scary. Because I didn't know, well, what in the world do you do? 
you come home, you take care of the family. You know what I'm saying? You pick them up in the morning, you take them to school, you wake them up, you give them hugs, you, you give them hugs, you give them kisses, you do all this other stuff. But what do you do now? And so I had to go through this period of time where I'm starting to understand and learn myself in a way that I never had to before. Well, what happened because of that? Through that, I got a chance to really dig deep and find out, well, what is it that I'm here to do in this next chapter of my life? I got a chance to redefine it and look at it. And because of it, I started to, I came up with the vision. The vision was inspired into me, the revelation of the things that I'm doing now. I'll never forget, back in 2010, that's when I wrote it in my book. And I wrote it in a book just like this, on a plane back from, from Virginia to California. I wrote in that book the vision that was poured into me about what I'm still to accomplish. Here's what I wrote. I wrote about a next level training and performance company, and it was a man running up steps. And it said, hey, there's always another level to your life. There's always another level, and it takes training to get to it. And guess what? It takes work to get there. There's, there's, there's a next level in your relationship, your marriage, your health, your finances, everything. And so I started that, and I said, okay, I'm going to make that a sports organization. So I did sports camps, so I wrote that down. And then I said, okay, I want to do a foundation, and I want to, do my, I want to continue my foundation, and I want to basically have these life camps where I'm, where I'm able to entertain thousands of family, families, and I get a chance to get them connected to organizations and different things that they need. I get to inspire them and motivate them, and then create this one fun, inspiring atmosphere where fun, engagement, experience, all this. And then I created my foundation. That said, you know what? I love to speak, and I love to communicate, and I love to write. And I, want to, and I want to go around the country and I want to speak and I want to talk to companies. I want to talk to churches, schools, individuals. I want to do this. And I wrote it. You see, having, being divorced gave me that time to spend time into the next phase of my life. At first, I didn't want the divorce. I didn't want that. I didn't think that was the next thing, the next part of the chapter of the journey. But how many of you guys know sometimes that we have limited understanding of the bigger picture? And so what I began to do, I began to try to maximize that season of my life. And through that time, I started writing. I started to develop. I started to build relationships. And to this day, that was 10, that was basically almost eight years ago. To this day, I've held 135 sports camps. Okay? I won a sports Emmy Award. I won a sport. Matter of fact, I'll show you. It's right here. Of course, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to bring, bring out the hardwood, baby. I ain't gonna just tell you about it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna just tell you about it. I'm gonna show you about it. I won a sports Emmy Award for, for my sports camps that I did. I hosted over 25 life camps, impacting over 5,500 families, okay, in Jacksonville with life skills, character development, financial literacy, okay, getting them health and, health and wellness. I mean, you name it. Uh, dignity, achievement, respect, and empowerment for boys, girls, moms, dads, children, everybody. I was able to host those. I was able to build the relationships that I need to build so I can go ahead and to produce those in the city of Jacksonville, hosting them down at the Jaguar Stadium, redefine, repurpose that place where it was a place where it was just for football and scores and championships and all that. But now we were making an impact in the lives of people. And then I said, you know what? I mean, what about the speaking? And so now, ever since, since back then, I've given over 250 talks. Okay, to organizations, to schools, to churches, you know what I mean, all across the country, out of the country. I was able to write, I was able to write a book and in the process, write, write, actually write two books and in the process of writing four books this year. All because of what? All because that divorce happened and it gave me a chance to really enter the next chapter of my life. I'm not saying for you to enter the next chapter of your life, you got to divorce, get divorced. That is not what I'm saying. But here's what I am saying. There's sometimes life is not happening, understand this, life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you and because of you. And there's some situations that you must go through that you may not naturally go through. You may not decide and sign up for it. But the designer, life, God, the manufacturer, the one who knows all things, the one who says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As far as the heaven is, is the earth, so is mine above yours. I know the plans I have for you. You may not know them yet. You're trying to define them. You're trying to discover those things. But I know them. Because God starts from the end and begins, he starts from the beginning from the end. You ever go by a building, you ever go by an empty parking lot and you see a sign up and it has a vision, a picture of a board of what the building is going to be when it's finished? You see, for the architect and the designer, they already finished it. They already know it. But at that moment, there's nothing there but a wood sign. But in their mind, they already began with the end in mind. 
And now all they do is they give the vision to the people who can do something with it so they can walk it out. So is the same thing for you. God started with the big end in mind. And he says, my plans for you are good. They're not to harm you, but they give you a future and an expected end. And so God has that plan for you. You see, there's a blessing in your affliction. And so again, that was the story of Job. That was the story of this Job right here named Donovan. And so to this day, okay, I'm grateful for the fact that I had to go through divorce. I also learned how to love my children from a distance, how to win their heart, how to learn in different ways, how to encourage other people. You see, the peace that I have now is through the pain, is because of the pain that I've been through. The peace that I have now is because of the perspective that I allowed myself to put on and see life through and walk through. And so is the same thing for you. You see, there's a blessing for your affliction. So here's what Job says in, in, in Job, Job chapter 3, verse 17. It says, Behold, happy is the man who God corrected. Therefore, despise not the chastening of the Almighty. It said, Behold, happy is the man who God corrected. Is this feel like God's correcting you right now? Or are there some things where you're going through adverse situations, you're being tested? It seems like you're taking one step forward, two steps back. It seems like no matter where you go, you're just bumping your head into a wall. It just seems like, man, you're just getting resistance no matter what you try in different areas of your life. It says, Behold, happy is the man who God corrected. Who God corrected. Well, what is the correction about? Getting you back on the path. You see, God knows the purpose of your life. Our job is to discover that purpose. Let me say it again. God knows the end purpose of your life. But the fun, the enjoyment, the journey is about discovering it. You ever go to an amusement park and you get on a roller coaster? You see, in that time with the roller coaster, you don't enjoy the experience by just standing on the side watching everybody get on a roller coaster. You don't enjoy the experience by seeing the fun, hearing the fun, okay, of everybody when they go up and they come down. But the only way you enjoy the ride is when you get on that roller coaster and you allow yourself to go all the way up and to come all the way down. And I'm sure while you're on that roller coaster, you're like, oh my goodness, why in the world did I get on this roller coaster? I must be crazy. But you're going on the roller coaster and you're this, that, and the other, and it drops down, and you're like, oh my goodness. How about life? Has life seemed like a roller coaster for you too? Have you been in a situation where you feel like it's whipping you around that corner, it's turning up and down, it's twisting? And then what happens when you go when the roller coaster is almost done? What happens when it's slowing down and it's coming back into to, to the port where you get off and everybody else gets back on? What do you probably say a lot of times to the person next to you? Oh my goodness, that was crazy. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. You see, life cannot be enjoyed from the sideline. Life can only be enjoyed by getting on the journey, by getting on the ride. So it says, behold, happy is the man who God corrected. Therefore, don't despise the chastening of the Almighty. If you're feeling like you're bumping your head against the road or it seems like it's the opposition, hey, man, hey, behold, happy. I'm glad that I'm being chastened. You know, when I played football and I, when I coached as well, I used to always tell people, <laughs> the only time you get nervous, the, only, the players, the only time you get nervous is if the coach stopped talking to you. Anybody that played football, you know. If the coach stopped talking to you, then you need to worry. But as long as he's coaching you up, as long as he's encouraging you, as long as he's saying, hey, man, hey, don't do it this way. Do this, do that, do, it, do this, and do that. As long as he's doing it, you may feel like, oh, man, I can't do nothing right. But as long as he's correcting you, be happy. Because once he stops correcting you, once he stops talking to you, once he say, you know what, once you give up a big play and the coaches look at you and he don't say nothing to you and you're looking for him to correct you, he say, oh, no, nah, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you come back to the sideline and you just know coach is going to say something to you to correct you. You know you messed up and you're so used to him correcting you, but all of a sudden he just stopped correcting you. Say, hey, yeah, just go get some water, man. Hey, don't even worry about it. You good. When he says you good, is you really not good. And so again, it's saying happy is the man who God is correcting. Accept it. There's a blessing in your affliction. There is a blessing in your affliction. Job 23 and 10 says, But he, talking about God, knoweth the way that I take. When he, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Think about that. It says, God knoweth the way that I should take. When he's tried me, I should come forth as pure gold. You know what that means? That means God believes in you. God knows that you're stronger on the inside than sometimes you even believe. 
God knows that there's greater one on the inside than what's on the outside. Because it says this, but God knows the way that you're going to take. He's not going to make you take that way, but he knows the way that you're going to take. Sometimes it takes some time for us to come to our realization and come to our senses to choose the right way. But God knows the way that you're going to take when he tries you. When he allows you to go through, he knows eventually you're going to shape up just like your kids. God knows. I know you're like, ah, oh, my teenager, oh, adolescence, you know. But God knows the way that you're going to take when they try them, when they're going through these things. They're going to come back. They're going to come back. That's why it says train up a child in the way, you wish you waited, the way in which you want them to go so that when they get older, they won't depart from it. That means they won't lose the taste of it. They don't lose the taste of it pretty soon. They may eat something else, but they're going to come right back to it. So don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. It says, but he should try me when I come forth as pure gold. Somebody is coming pure forth as pure gold. Listen, this right here, this thing right here is gold. This thing was tried in the fire and it's come through as pure gold. You know what they do, how they purify gold? They keep putting it in and they bring it out. They put it in and they bring it out. You know when they know that it's time for that thing to be pure, considered pure gold, when they can see their reflection in it and there isn't any more blemishes. You see, the very purpose of the fire that we go through in life sometimes is to burn off the impurities, to burn off some of the, you know what I'm saying, the stinking thinking, to burn off some of the things that were the religious ways that we've been doing things, to burn off some of the perspective that hasn't been helping us according to our purpose, to burn off some of the, some of the insecurities and the doubts that, that, that we've been holding and carrying along. To burn off and to burn away some of the friends or the associates that ain't helping us and ain't, ain't a part of this chapter of our life anymore. God says he knows the way you want to take. But for everybody, everybody's journey is different. For some, they may get to their journey faster. For others, it may take a little longer. But God says, I know the way that you want to take when I try you. You're going to come through as pure gold. There's a blessing in your affliction. There's a blessing in your affliction. You're going to come through as pure gold if you keep moving, if you keep going, if you keep the faith, and when you don't give up. I'm going to read one more, you guys. Hebrews chapter 12 and 11. And what I'm going to do, okay, do me a favor. If you like this message, if there's something in this message that you would like me to respond about and go deeper, here's what I'm doing. From these messages, when I start coming on live, I'm going to allow you guys to dictate what are some of the messages for your heart, for your family, for your circumstances. So do me a favor, if you like, go ahead and type in the comments any area that you want me to do some videos on, okay? Or just give some perspective on, or just give some encouraging on. Maybe there's somebody at your job. Maybe there's somebody in your family that's going through, and they just need a word. You've been giving them a word, but how many of you know that sometimes somebody else may have their ear? And then what you do is after I make that video and you get it like from a YouTube channel or something, you take that link and say, you know what? Hey, um, I was thinking about you and I care so much about you. I was thinking about you and, uh, and, and I heard somebody talking about something I think that you might like, that, you, that might encourage it to you. Hey, take a look at this. Take a listen to this and, uh, and tell me what you think about it. And so that's another way for you to love other people. You see, I'm a messenger of inspiration and hope to all people in all nations. That's my purpose in life. That's what I'm here for. And so I want to continue to encourage and I want to continue to partner and build up life and go through life with you. And so, again, definitely go ahead and type in the comments, any area that uh, any area, any topic or whatever that you feel like you would like to hear some encouragement on. We'll go from there. OK, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, it says, now, no chastening, no discipline for the present seemeth to be joyous, but it seems to be grievous. It said, nevertheless, it said, nevertheless, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by it. I'm going to read it again. Now, no chastening, no discipline for the present moment seems to be joyous. There ain't nothing when I go through when somebody's telling me no or I'm not getting what I, do, I, don't, what I want or I'm getting what I don't want. There ain't nothing about it seems good and joyous at that moment. It says, but it actually seemed grievous. It said, nevertheless, nevertheless, despite that, despite what you think, despite what you feel, despite what it looks like, despite what it feels like, remember this, it, what is that it? The chastening, the affliction, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness, of right standing, 
of being able to stand in the rightful place as an ambassador for God here on this earth, as a child of God, who, who is a king, who is a queen, who is a royalty, who has who is a co-creator, who is who is the most masterful masterpiece ever created. The right standing in your identity, the right standing in your belonging, the right standing in your in, in, in your in your purpose, in your life, in your passion, in your pursuit, the right standing. He said, but nevertheless, it yieldeth a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by it. You see, your afflictions are exercising you. If you look back over your life, I guarantee you there's never a moment in your life where you are not going through something. There's never a moment that you are going through something. You are being exercised by your affliction. I just got off the treadmill, okay? I got off the treadmill this morning, okay? I, you know, to get on there for like an hour, put on an incline and all that stuff. And I do this stuff. I do something on base almost every single day. And I do it because I want to be exercised. I want, to, I want the peaceable fruit, okay? The peaceable fruit that exercise brings of health, wealth, you know what I'm saying? Health and wealth in my mental, my emotional, in every area. So that's what I do. So affliction has the same peaceable fruit. When I go through, I'm being changed. I'm being molded. I'm being sculpted. I'm being shaped. I'm coming through like pure gold. And so what is, what is chastening you today? What is afflicting you today? What is opening up the opportunity for you to go to your next level today? Whatever it is, there's a blessing in your affliction. Listen, if you have any questions, you guys definitely go ahead. Remember, post in, put in the post in the comments any of the, uh, any, any subject you want me to talk about, any comments, any questions you have, okay? I'm here to partner with you. Whatever you need, I'm here to partner with you. I have a slogan I live by in my life, and remember this if this is the first time you ever heard me. It is that I love people and I use money and not the other way around. I love people and I use money and not the other way around. And my love for people allows for me or calls for me to do this, to come, okay, to take time out, to connect, to inspire, to motivate, to energize, to give perspective. And so again, the greatest thing you can ever do with a coach, the greatest thing you can ever do with a mentor is to ask them a question. That's the greatest thing you can ever do because then you pull from them what it is you need. And so again, there's no, there's no better question, okay, there's no worse question except the one that's not asked. And so here's what I'm going to do as we conclude, conclude this message. Do me a favor, make sure you hit share. I'm also going to wind up posting this message on YouTube as well. So you can definitely go to my YouTube channel, Donovan Darius, as well. And you'll see a whole lot of, whole lot of other different things, that, um, uh, different videos that I believe that can encourage you, okay? Definitely subscribe to that, my YouTube page as well if you like it. So that way you can get notified when I'm posting different things. And then also you share with me what you want as well. So the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to read a prayer that I wrote. And this prayer is a prayer when you're going through affliction. Okay? This is a prayer that I pray when you're going through affliction. Feel free to listen to this again. Feel free to write this. Feel free to do whatever it is. All this is for you. It's for you and your journey. And here's what it says. It says, Father God, I thank you that you said, that you said, blessed and happy is the man who you corrected. For it is a good thing that I do not become bitter or despise the chastening and the discipline of the Almighty. It is because you are omniscient and you already know the way that I will choose to take, the way of righteousness and faithfulness, that you have tried me and you trusted me in this affliction. Your word says that after this time of affliction, I will come forth as pure gold. Although I don't enjoy the affliction, I realize that you have used this because I may have or would have went. I would have astray, but now it has caused me to keep your word. In the midst of my trials and all my tribulations, there are times when I never thought it would end. But I realized through your word that these are only light afflictions. And these light afflictions are for a moment. But while I'm enduring them, I'm encouraged knowing that these are the tools that are actively working for me and for us, and they're working on our behalf to produce for us a far more eternal weight of glory. Father, I thank you that the righteousness that I now walk in, that I now walk in, 
is only because of the chastening of the present that was grievous, that was tough, and at times it seemed unbearable. I understand that my view of my trials and my tribulations and afflictions may have been, may have been created based on society and the present age of this world. But I read in your word the final testimony of that we are the ones that are going to come out of this great tribulation. And you've washed, you have washed us in the robe of your son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, I say to you, have your way. Let your will be done. I thank you for the good. I thank you for the bad. I thank you for the ups. I thank you for the downs. I thank you for the ins and the outs the trials, tribulations, and the triumphs. Because you, Father God, are sovereign and total in control. That is a prayer while we go through affliction. My prayer to you is that you allow affliction to shape you, to exercise you, to build you up, to take you to your next level in your lives. Listen, I'm Donovan Darius. It's been my pleasure to be your coach this morning, someone to build a relationship with you, someone to walk with you, Someone to not tell you what to do, not tell you what to say, not even tell you what to believe, but somebody to give you perspective and walk with you as, you as you go through your life. Listen, greater things ahead of you because the greater one is on the inside of you. Listen, you guys be blessed, man. Have an awesome day. Post your comments. Subscribe to the pages, okay? YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Everybody out in the Instagram world, Facebook world, YouTube world, all that good stuff, man. Y'all be blessed today. Have an awesome, awesome, and wonderful day.